Last night in Soho started, I feel like a long time ago for me. Um, Edgar and I first met because Sam Mendes introduced us and um, we went on a night out in Soho and he told me about his idea and I told him that I used to work in a bar. I think at the time I still was working in a bar and had lived above a strip club in Soho, so I knew it very well. Um, and he asked me for a tour of the sort of illicit um, places that you find out in Soho that you only if you live there. Um, so we went on a night out. I took him to Trisha's and the Tukin and Troy and all these sort of like, you know, dingy clubs that aren't Soho House. And uh, and he told me the story and I loved it. I thought it was like an absolutely fantastic story and I couldn't wait to see it on screen. And then I think about maybe six months later, he phoned me up and said, do you want to write it with me? Um, and I said, yes, that's a very easy question to answer. Working with Edgar is just fantastic. He's such, he's such a, he's just such an amazing collaborator. He's so much fun to work with. He's so much fun in the room. He lets you be playful. He also lets you be dumb, which is so important to get a really good script is sometimes you have to say like really dumb ideas. And uh, Edgar allowed me to be an idiot, <laughs> which was very kind of him. He told me the story um, and it, you know, just kind of like said it to me one evening when we were out uh, and it had sort of played in my mind a lot. I just thought it was such a fantastic idea. And then when it came to writing it, we rented an office in Soho actually, and we sat, and I think we spent two weeks with a whiteboard, just going through everything, like really analyzing the story, what extra parts might be needed to make it feel like a fully fledged out film and talking loads about the characters. And at the end of those two weeks, we'd already got really the outline of the film. Um, and then, he started writing, I started writing, we sent screens, uh, we sent scripts back and forth, scenes back and forth, uh, and like slowly built the thing until it was, you know, the first draft of the script. And then we came back together again and we sat down in the room and we went through it and then we sent it to, you know, the fantastic producers, Naira Park, um, and got their feedback and, and just kept working, kept refining it. So it was, sometimes we were in the room together, sometimes we were in different continents. Sometimes I was on the set of 1917. Um, sometimes he was in LA. Yeah, we, we, we made it work. Last Night in Soho is a psychological thriller. And with that, the key elements are always that it must be thrilling <laughs> as a get-go, but also the psychology in it needs to pertain to the characters. So you need to build characters that the audience relate to, understand, and then you need to create fears for those characters that feel real to the audience. Um, so in this case, you know, with Thomas and Mackenzie's character, Ellie, the fear of losing your mind, of not sure, like, if what's real and what's fake, of, of finding yourself in a new city and trying to grow up and trying to fit in and at the same time finding yourself very different from everyone else. Those were the key elements that allow you to sort of build this into a psychological thriller. Last Night in Soho opens in the countryside with a young girl, Eloise, who is dreaming of moving to the big city and having a glittering career in fashion. Um, and basically it opens with her getting her acceptance to the London College of Fashion. Um, she moves to London. She finds herself in a hall of residence with a bunch of students that are not particularly nice. And she is not living the life that she wanted, so she moves out. She finds a bed set that's very kind of like a throwback from the 60s. There's still some of the decorations from the 60s in it even. She finds that it reminds her of home and also of where she wants to go. Um, she rents that. She Sits, settles in there pretty well. And then um, I think the first night she's there, she falls asleep and she's transported in her dreams through time back to the 1960s. And in this dream, she follows this girl called Sandy, who is everything Eloise wants to be. When Edgar and I were working on the script, we always wanted Sandy to be iconic. And so we would look at a lot of kind of the art girls from the 60s, you know, Twiggy, all of these like famous actresses that really embodied that decade, that era. Um, and I suppose uh, the French call it je ne sais quoi, don't they? You're looking for something that's slightly uncapturable on the page and uncapturable on film. Uh, and then you have to cast someone who can embody that. And that's how you end up with Anya Taylor-Joy. <laughs> Very luckily, she is, she has the charm and the charisma to bring that to life in a way that I think Edgar and I could only have dreamed of. Anya's just such an incredible actress. Um, the first time I met her in person was at the table read for Last Night in Soho, um, which we did, you know, and it was the first time we'd have everyone together. 
And I know Edgar and her had done a lot of work um, on talking about the character and refining that character and understanding the sort of how she works, what her dream is, what she wants and what she's willing to trade for what she wants is, you know, all very important. Um, but I remember very distinctly after that first table read, you know, everyone left and Edgar and I were, were sitting in the room and we both went, so we need to just give her more lines. She's fantastic. <laughs> she's just so phenomenal. And, um, you know, her singing voice, everything, everything about her as an actress, you know, what she brought to this role is just sort of immeasurable. Eloise is really who the audience should relate with, what relate to when they go into this film. Um, you know, she's young, she's just finished school, she grew up in the countryside, she grew up in, you know, Cornwall, Red Ruth. Um, she's very much a, a fish out of water. Um, and she has dreams and she has ambitions, but she's still finding out who she is, she's still finding who she is. And the one thing that's really important about Eloise is that she's obsessed with the 60s. She's nostalgic for a time that she never even lived in. Um, and that's, you know, through her fashion that's channeled because obviously fashion, the 60s, pretty good decade for it. Um, but she is very much, you know, desperate to live then and to be in London then. It was the centre of the universe. Everyone was there, the Rolling Stones, Princess Margaret. You know, you couldn't really get a cooler place. Um, and when she comes to London, you know, she gets into the, the London College of Fashion and she comes here ready to live her dreams and she finds that London isn't just what she thought it would be. It doesn't match up. And I think that's something loads of people, I certainly experienced it when I was a young girl and moved to London. Um, suddenly you find yourself plunged into this big thronging metropolis and it's 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 frightening. And I think, when Ellie gets to London, she withdraws. 